me just walk through some of these features. These are sort of advanced features that I just want to point out to you so that you're aware of the capability. And so you can create an Excel function to use it in Excel as a custom function. Let me see. So I say I open up this sheet, whatever she doesn't remember what sheet we have open. But here's your custom function. You put the word function in there, give it a name, and then so this is going to do a message box, it looks like. So I'll just copy this code and create this function, and it appears in the, in the user function. I'll just go over to, I don't think I have to put this in the, do I put it in the worksheet? I guess it doesn't matter where I put it, but I'll put it uh, in the personal macro workbook maybe. But you can put it, I think you put it in the worksheet too. Here's the personal macro workbook here. So I'll go to this module, I'll just paste it in there, and I have this thing called function test two, and it's gonna do a dimension, it's gonna set test two, and it's gonna do a message box of test two. So if I close this out, come back to Excel, and click, choose this thing called function here, there's a new option here called user-defined functions. And that only appears after you create a function. And there's my, test two right there. So you can create functions to do things. I haven't really worked with this too much, but if I add this in there, see all it does is it just runs that message box is all it does. So the idea of that is just you can create functions that do some specialized type of functions and you can add them right to the FX up on the top here. So here's your defined function. So that is just some people might need to do that, but just knowing that the capability is all I'm trying to point out here. So here's your Excel function. We did that. This is called it. And what this does is you can have one function could create some parameters, and the second function and the third function could use those parameters. So in this case, and the other thing I wanted to touch on here is the passing feature. So you, remember we, we've talked about the subroutine here. And we talked about this parenthesis, but we never really talked about what is in the parenthesis. And you can actually pass parameters inside the parenthesis. So in this case, we're going to say, I want to do a dim dimension of A, B, and answer as integers. I'm going to set A to be 2 and B to be 3. But then I'm going to call another program called Calculate. It's going to take A and B and pass those on to this function called calculate. Pass the three and the B, and there's nothing in the answer, but it's gonna pass it on anyway. So in this case, it's gonna say, it calls this formula. So that formula gets functioned down here. It receives the A and the B right here, it pulls those values into this formula, it multiplies A times A times B, and puts the answer in here. But when you end the function, it actually returns back to this point. See? Then the answer gets passed back through here. So you can have some specialized function that might do some specialized calculation. And that being maybe a very complicated code. Maybe it does some amortization or some some stock values or some some information, just some real complicated coding. And then any routine can pass information and that routine then would calculate it and bring it back. I don't want to have to cut and paste that code and put it into my code because that's sort of maintained separately. Okay, so, uh, and this is something that's not used a whole lot, but I wanted to show you at least what a call feature was. And that is something that is built into the Visual Basic that you could use at some point. Right? Uh, here's a couple of examples of call function. I went through several examples. But you can probably cut and paste these out and test these out yourself. So here's you guys have there's a function here and a function here. So it looks like I'm calling this clear all formats. And here it is here. So it's actually doing this and coming back to this point. So you can use the call feature. Uh, and this is just more or less just showing you what's out there really. These are what I call using Excel formulas in VB. So there are a lot of formulas that are supported in Visual Basic. Things like 
the date function. There's a date formula in, there's one here called just the date. And so there's a function that extracts the date from the computer clock. But there's also a function in Excel to do the same thing. But you're using this function in VB. There's a length function, we used that earlier in the class. But that is a VB command. This is a VB program that does the same thing that the length function does in Excel. And of course, there's a lot of the functions are supported. So I don't know if they're all supported, but a lot of them are. So they're really two separate commands. This is a round function called mouth round. This is an Excel function, but it's also a VB function. So just letting you know that you can view functions inside of VB. And that's the only thing. There's a sum function that you use in VB that actually does sum of information. But you can also do that in Excel. So that's all we're trying to point out here. The left function, the mid function, the right function, and this run on open. Now this is an important little point because uh, the run on open means that when you open up Excel, it will actually run the code. And so here's an example of, you have to put the word private in here, a private sub, and then you put it actually in the, in right in here. So see this, this little sheet that you have in this VB project here? If you double click on that sheet, it actually opens up this sheet and you can put that code right there and that means that when you open up this sheet it actually opens up it runs the, the actual VB code so here we have and I hear point here that says private sub open and we're going to simply say message box welcome to the startup workflow so I can select this code copy it and then I can paste that into any sheet I want doesn't matter I'll just go to the worksheet. I'll put it here. And I'll go to VB here. And inside the worksheet one, if I click on this icon right here, it actually opens up this a new code screen. And I can paste that code in there. So it simply says that when I open up this worksheet, it's going to execute this code. So you can actually have some sort of proprietary statement that pops up as a message box like this. So let me go ahead and save this off. I'll close this off right here. I'll save off this thing called worksheet. Looks like I have to save it as an enabled file. So it says continue saving as a micro free enabled. You say yes. So I'll just make sure it gets saved out properly. So I'll say file save as. So we have to put it off as a macro enabled file. I'll give it a different name so I can Make sure I can the right file. Careful parts of your document include personal information. So this is a message that says that it's actually. There's that file. Open up this file here, and it opens it up. It, it said there's some security issues. My security says warn me if if it's going to run a macro, and so that was my security level. If I say enable macros, it actually comes up with my little problem. So a lot of people don't realize that. That's that once you discover this, there's a lot of things you can do to actually, you know, define your things in your sheet to display certain things when you open it up. Uh, warning or, you know, or maybe even talk about procedures that need to be done or just as a reminder of some of something that you might want to be done. So that is what this is all about. I wrote some code here to actually use a password protect feature. So what this does is it says you're going to paste this into the open screen. It's going to have an input box and it's going to simply ask me for the password and the password's going to be one, two, three, four, five. And then if it's wrong, if that's not correct, if that's not what I typed in, then it comes back and says wrong password. And then it's going to close the workbook off. Well, let me open the workbook. And so then it comes back and says, if it, if it is the correct password, then go ahead and open up the sheet and do this. So I'll just copy that out. And so 
it's kind of a behind the scenes way of doing this of defining a password you have the Delaway too of course and this and I'll save that off I'll save close I'll open and so when it comes back and says what's the password I say it's one two three four five if I say it's one two three four it's okay it comes back says wrong password that closes the file off it tries to close it off well, it's trying to close them all look at that interesting so trying to close everything uh, if I do a file open again because I, I canceled it, see it? So, this is here. Let me try it again. One, two, three, four, five. And it says, okay, welcome to the budget worksheet. So, yeah, I just tried to come up with another reason why we might want to put some code in the beginning, but this is an example of something. All right, so that is pretty much that chapter. So. Just a couple of miscellaneous things that that I wanted to sort of advance subject, but some of those could be useful.